There she is. Can you hear me? Yeah, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Amy Lee, so great to see you. Where am I? Uh, where am I in your, is this your home? Yeah, this is the studio out back. Very cool. I love it. I love it. It almost looks like my upstairs uh, loft at my apartment, my uh, condo. Yeah. yeah, that's what it used to be. When we lived in um, Brooklyn for years, my studio was like the very top little tiny room on the top floor. Um, yeah. I've got this bigger space. We live in Tennessee now and it's been love really it. great to have like a separate place to go, you know, where nobody can hear me scream. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, uh, congratulations on everything. Amy Lee from Evanescence and what a, a long and illustrious career. You've done a great, uh, a great job. You've got such an amazing God-given talent. So congratulations on everything for utilizing that in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and congratulations on The Bitter Truth, the new album and the song Better Without You. I'm curious, how personal is that song? I mean, is it written from a first person perspective as in a true story about a relationship you once had or it's more like a commonality? It, it, well, there's commonality in the fact that it's not all directed at one person. I actually kind of split the song into sections about different obstacles, different monsters to slay along the way in my journey. So like verse one is early days, um, what I was up against. And um, the second verse is the next chapter fighting against the man. And then the third one was um, more present day. Um, I sang that that bridge it's over your time is over now the day that <laughs> man was just taking real meaning in the moment so um it's a journey so I, it is about a lot of things but it is all very personal to me very cool uh so you initially met up with ben moody back in 94 to christian youth camp i'm curious that the only reason i bring that up is uh, i'm curious as to how your faith has been tested throughout the uh, the whole covid thing um wow that's that's quite a question yeah. um I think that having to be faced with our mortality in this time is um, is big. It's been big for me. It's not something that I haven't had to face before, um, but that's something that was spurred on for me a couple of years ago um, with the loss of my brother, who is one of my best friends and favorite people in my life. Um, that experience definitely led me to some some real soul searching um, that has been a, a long process. It's an ongoing process. Yeah. Um, with the uh, whole pandemic and the, with the slowdown, was that kind of a blessing or a curse? If you take a look at the plans that you had prior to January of 2020. You know, I think I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I it'd be it'd be hard to look at this time and go, yeah, that was a blessing. So many people have died. Yeah. Um, but I really feel like we made the best of it. And looking at the bright side of it, it forced us into a, a place that, for me, like isolation and lockdown, and and that's kind of what I need as a very primary part of my creative process. Mm -hmm. So I just went for it in a way that there would have been a lot of other distractions and interruptions. If we had gone on with our plans and gone on tour, we'd recorded four songs and we were going to then go on tour for a while with Within Temptation in Europe and then come back and do some more writing. And it was sort of like album making light. Like we weren't doing it full on like, yeah, like yeah. we actually did. So when everything got postponed and shut down, we were like, okay, we're not going to wait a second. We're not going to waste a day. And there's that there's taking that mortality thing into um, the equation for me. I took it as a fire, like the whole thing, like we're all in something that we can't control. We don't know when it, it's going to end. Like, it seems like just anything suddenly could happen. The rug just is getting pulled out from under us in so many ways. Um, it made me feel like there's no time to lose. Like we're going to take that and live every moment. And I want to make another album. I want it to be the best thing we've ever done. So let's go. Mm -hmm. So I really just spent every day either in here or at Nick Raskulnik studio who we're in the same town now. So that was an incredible blessing. So, um, I definitely think we made the best of it. Very cool. Um, your biggest songwriting partner in the band today, who would that be? It's it, that's an interesting question. It's changed. It's 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 become more open than sort of a duo partnership like it used to be. Yeah, um, I, I like to most of the songs start sort of from a place of me writing on my own and getting like a, a foundational idea, like a chord progression or, or, or a verse or a, a chorus groove and then bring it in and having us make it together really as a group. Um, so 
then there are other songs that we literally, you know, we're in a place now where we can speak each other's language and work together and be patient with each other and encourage each other and challenge each other that we can actually jam in the moment and um, make stuff happen. That started really happening for the first time on our last self-titled album. That's part of the reason it, it was a self-titled album. Mm really felt like us becoming a real full band uh, yeah. for the first time in a lot of ways. So this was a cool experience. The songs came from everywhere. And um, I, I couldn't say that one was really more than another. Yeah. You know, and technology, I think, has been kind of a blessing and a curse. Being a musician myself, you know, the, uh, up until 20 years ago, the way you wrote songs was getting into a room, getting sweaty, cranking it up, and someone's got a riff and the band just jams on something. And then you kind of when you go into the studio, you distill that down with a great producer who becomes like the fourth or fifth member of the band, right? Uh, and nowadays, you can pretty much just send stems, you know, over the internet to different people who have got Pro Tools, and they can import that stuff. True. So you're telling me, Amy, that the uh, that the self titled record was more of you guys actually jamming in a room together and coming up with ideas that way. Yeah, it was more of a group effort than it ever had been before. Mm. Um, and that something about that was for me to feel that kind of trust for all my other bandmates and yeah, yeah. also just being comfortable enough in myself as an artist that I wasn't afraid to suck or come up with a dumb idea in front of people. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was younger, that was just something I was like more guarded about. Like I, no one will know yeah. if I spend like a week getting one little tiny cool idea out um, by myself and then bring it to the table like it's no big deal. Um, now it's kind of like, well, you just go, go, go. I know there's good stuff in me and <laughs> don't be afraid. You gotta suck in front of each other before it's gonna be good. That's just how it is. And we've all been together for a long time and, and know each other and trust each other that way. Yeah, totally. You know, my uh, my wife, I've kind of bucked the whole uh, the voice or American Idol thing. It's something that my wife has typically watched in the past, but the pandemic has forced us to not do a whole lot of anything. And when those seasons are out, then I'll sit down on the couch and begrudgingly watch it with her. There's some tremendous talent there. Um, if somebody from American Idol or the voice asked you to come along as a celebrity mentor or maybe a judge, is that something that you would uh, be into doing or is that something you go, yeah, probably doesn't fit my image? You know, it, I don't think it's as much about my image. I think that, that that would be great exposure. It's just not really my style. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time like casting judgment, even if it's all positive. It, it, it still feels, I don't know. I've, I've been invited into similar roles like that and always declined just yeah. because I feel, I don't know, like I only ever want to support. I don't think I could really share my honest opinion. <laughs> with so, so you would be, you would be a best. horrible Simon Cowell. <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't do it. Um, I know what it takes. I know how hard it is. And I kind of have, um, I have an opinion that's a more purist opinion than a, um, a smart marketing based opinion, I guess, to, as far as like what happens and what choices you make. And I don't know if that really fits. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think you should just be who you are. Um, but at the same time, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's cool. We, we definitely exist in that world. I, I, we get asked very often, you know, to have our songs used by contestants and it's fascinating and a huge honor. It's cool to be a part of that culture and, and, and watch that happen. Yeah. I would imagine the first question is, or the, the first statement is, wow, how cool, what an honor. And second question is how much? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh, tell me about your relationship with one of my dear friends that I've known since she was knee high to a grasshopper and hung out with her uh, her parents the first time she and her band came through town, Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm. How did the uh, this whole double header tour come to be? You know, this is sort of a no brainer. Yeah. Like loved each other forever. Um, we cross each other's paths all the time. Uh, we live in the same town. We just got together a little bit last year um, for Use My Voice. Lizzie was um, one of the lovely ladies I had come in and sing and we awesome. actually that and play a couple of songs on the new record while we we're still working on them and um we we just admire each other and get along as friends i don't even know how the conversation started it was like what's the first tour back gonna be like how about hailstorm Pfft, yeah like yeah. of course that's exactly what i want to do so. Duh. um now the tour has taken you all over the u.s and around the world as well i was looking at some of the tour dates um any uh places on the schedule that you've never been to that you're super excited to go and check out well, our tour with Hailstorm is just U.S., but we have another tour scheduled with Them Temptation that's in Europe. I don't, I don't think there's a country on there that we haven't been to, but it's like 
especially now, yeah. not having been able to go. By the time we go on that tour, it'll have been a two year delay. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, that's never happened, not even close to anything like that. So um, we're dying just to go and travel. Yeah. <laughs> like it's going to feel so good once we finally get back there. Yeah. So is there a particular city over in Europe that you're like, man, uh, yeah, we can do a show here, but I want to spend the rest of the week just exploring. Well, we added Spain and I think Portugal as well. I'm trying to remember it back now. We at least Spain. We added them because they weren't on the main one and we just have to. Yeah. Like I love Spain so much. That's where we shot the My Immortal video. Mm -hmm. um, I even speak just a little bit of Spanish growing up in <laughs> South Florida. Muy so poquito. like like yeah, un poquito. Um, enough that like I feel like I can I I can go like shopping and kind of like do yeah. it, you know. Uh and I think that that's just a place that we all really love to go to and the fans are massive there. And for some reason they have a couple of different times been left off of the routing of the tour. And I just knew we couldn't do it to them again. So, okay. Uh, I'm curious, uh, who would you say right now today is the most influential uh, female presence in your life? Oh, well, God, that's hard. Like in my life, yeah. I mean, it could, it could be your mom or it could be. I want to see my mom. I, it's a kind of a toss up. My bestie is Beth Wilson. She's been my hair and makeup artist. And more importantly, my, my closest friend huh. wherever I brought her along on tour for the first time in Oh three. Um, I was out there by myself, just me and a bunch of guys and no other lady to be seen anywhere yeah. for the yeah. first months. And then I was like, Hey, I called home. She was, you know, doing hair in little rock. And I was like, they tell me that I'm allowed to like bring somebody to help me and you could do my hair. Like you want to like <laughs> go see the world a little bit, I'll pay you. And they're like, she was like, okay, yeah. And we've been doing it ever since. Um, I love her. I look up to her. I definitely go to her for uh, advice. <laughs> that's cool. And I mean, you have a husband who's a therapist, uh, Josh. Um, I'm curious because, uh, in, in my relationship, if I wasn't doing radio, I'd probably be like a psychologist or something. Uh, but my wife and I counsel each other a lot after 25 years of marriage, who counsels, uh, each other the most in your relationship, would you say? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's hard. That's a big conflict of interest right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. um, Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue. <laughs> we talk, but yeah. like, there's a lot of talk back. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine if, if my wife was a professional therapist, it would, it might be tough to go, God damn it, you always think you're always yeah, right. Like, stop you're analyzing. Always right. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I'm curious to, to find out what a great weekend looks like in your family with the, you know, husband and kids and you don't have anything else going on. And it's just, Hey, we have a down weekend this weekend. What, what does that look like? It's just chill. It's, it's cool being here because there's nature all around. Um, that's something we missed a little bit living in New York for so Back long. You know, it's not that it's not there. You just have to seek it out. And we didn't, I didn't even drive mm -hmm. until, um, moving here. I mean, I did years ago, but there was a 13 year gap in me being a licensed driver, which is insane. Yeah. Even thinking about the independence is fantastic, but anyway, yeah. like living in New York, if you want to go somewhere, you know, go to the beach, there's all those things to do, but it just takes a lot of like planning and travel and like rent a car or whatever. Um, so here I just, I just going on a little hike, you know, like, um, taking Jack to, a like a nature park and like finding a waterfall or cool. um, having a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I may be totally mistaken here. I'm not sure where you are now, but just based on some of the tidbits, are you in the Nashville area? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Have you ever uh, driven out like uh, Blue Ridge Parkway out toward Asheville and uh, explored that area? Like no. in the fall? No. Oh, no, I have to. That'd be a great weekend trip for you guys. I think Absolutely. my dream, which we haven't done yet, but like my favorite is getting out on a boat, like being in the water. I got to yeah. find out like how I think once we break the ice of like discovering like the way to go do that easily, like it's going to happen all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amy Lee, what a uh, great interview. Thank you so much for your time this morning. I know you're, you have a tight time schedule. The uh, Bitter Truth out and available now wherever you steal music. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see both you and my dear friend Lizzie Hale out on the road. That's going to be a big show. Thanks for playing the song. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon, Amy. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.